game Botvinnik punishes his opponent uh, for playing without a plan. At some point white just starts to make moves with his queen back and forth and, and this gives black um, a lot of opportunity to transfer his pieces to the best squares and uh, attack the white king. After this move, um, black is able to establish a strong control over the center and uh, prevent white from playing d4. So instead of playing castle, it was better to play d4 for white. The structure now resembles the, uh, the dragon variation with the colors reversed and um, white and black has also managed to put the pawn on c5 where it's better placed. With pawn to a4, white establishes a good square for his knight on c4, but at the same time this weakens the b4 square. Um, and after this, white kind of begins to play without a very clear plan. He just shuffles the queen back and forth, making four moves with the queen out of his next nine move. Given all that, and also the fact that black has um, an advantage in space, and his pieces are more active, he kind of gradually uh, consolidates the position and improves the placement of all his pieces. Uh, Black stands better, so he doesn't hur he doesn't hurry either. He is uh, waiting for the best moment to uh, place the knight on d4. After this, it's clear that black dominates the whole board. It's it's very hard for white to create any counterplay, and he basically ends up um, moving and shuffling his pieces on the first three ranks, as as black is getting ready for a decisive attack. By attacking the pawn on e2, black forces black to exchange on d4. Uh, this would give black the advantage of two bishops, but also would give white uh, a weakness on e2, and black is later going to double up on the e-file against e2 and increase the pressure on white's position. Uh, the bishop retreats and clears the e-file for the rooks to occupy it. White has to play pawn to h4 so that he at least has some square for his knight uh, to go to from f1. White keeps the bishop so that uh, he can use uh, that piece for defending e2. Uh, black is transferring the bishop to the best square, which is on d5. White still avoiding the exchange of the light squared bishops. Now after white played pawn to h4, the g3 square has been somewhat weakened, so black is going to transfer the bishop to d6, and that's why he moves uh, the rook aside. Now black is threatening to capture on the f3, and then exchange on e1 and then to win the pawn on d3 so white has to retreat back with the knight now white has to himself offer the exchange of light squared bishops as otherwise the black queen is just going to come to uh, d5 with very dangerous threats Uh, Black's pieces are very well placed, and he's just about to launch the, the decisive attack. Now simply because the g3 pawn is weak, there's really no good way to defend against the knight coming to e3. And if the pawn captures from f2 to e3, then uh, the g3 pawn is going to fall. The, 
the black pieces are much more active and it just becomes very difficult for white to defend all the weaknesses in the position. Now he can't really guard f2 in a good way and he pretty much has to drop a couple of pawns before resigning. And now white had to resign because he lost a couple of pawns and is about to lose some more and more material. So this game shows um, how Botvinnik would prepare the decisive attack with a lot of patience and that he was also very good in positions where he had extra space. Um, it would usually give him some extra confidence. It also shows that white was playing without a plan, just moving the pieces back and forth and uh, and Botvinnik uh, took a really good advantage of that by preparing you know, the attack on the king's side um, without really hurrying too much.